This is the sixth of a seven video series on factoring difference of squares. Before we can do a difference of squares problem, let's talk about what a square is. Of course, in geometry, it's a shape. But in algebra, when we say something is a square, we mean that it's writable as something squared or something times itself. For example, 49 is called a square because it's writable as 7 times itself. x to the 6th is a square because it's writable as x cubed times x cubed. x squared is a square, as the name might suggest, because it's expressible as x times x. Like, like, likewise, 25 is a square because it can be written as 5 times 5. And there's many other examples, of course. So here's a square and here's a square from the previous list of examples. Let's talk about the difference of squares. Difference just means subtraction, essentially. And so if I put a subtraction sign between two squares, we call this a difference of squares or difference of squares binomial. So this video is about how to factor differences of squares. Let me show you how we can use a trinomial method from a previous video or other kinds of factoring to do this. Now, this problem is clearly not a trinomial, but I could write it as if it were a trinomial by simply bumping over the constant term, noticing that there's no linear term in between the quadratic and constant, and simply writing it as a linear term with zero coefficient. I haven't changed the problem by adding 0x to it. 0x has a value of 0 no matter what x is, and therefore this is effectively the same problem. A strange way to write it, but the same problem nonetheless. So treating it as a trinomial, we can use our monic trinomial method here. That's the one where we have to find two numbers by guess and check in such a way that those two numbers multiply to make the constant and add to make the linear coefficient, which we've inserted as a zero. So let's look at all the ways to multiply to make negative 25. There aren't many. This times this is negative 25. This product is negative 25, as is this. And that's all there is. But remember, we're looking for that pair which adds to zero. This doesn't add to zero. This does. And clearly this doesn't. So this is the one we were looking for. And there's the pair that we've discovered by guess and check that will go in here and give us our factorization. So here's the problem and here's the answer. Now there's nothing wrong with that method at all, but let's examine this problem a different way to give you a different perspective. Here's a method that some people prefer. Rather than inserting a 0x term in between these, which you can do, here's an alternative. You can use what's called the square root method. Square rooting is the opposite of squaring. And so what you do here is you take the quadratic term and you take the square root of it, which is to say what times itself equals x squared. Well, clearly that's x times x. And then you do the same thing for the constant term, not the negative in front of it, just the 25 itself. And you ask yourself, what's the square root of 25? In other words, what times itself equals 25? Well, clearly that's 5 times 5. And all you have to do now is make one of your factors have a plus in the middle and one in the minus. It doesn't matter which order. And you've got the factorization now. By the way, when we have opposite middle signs, but the binomials are otherwise identical, there's a name for that you'll hear from time to time. It's called a conjugate pair. And we've seen before what happens when you multiply a conjugate pair together. Now, if this is indeed the answer to this, as we know it is, 
shouldn't it be the case that if I take my quote answer and foil it out, shouldn't I get the original problem back? So if I do first times first, outer times outer, inner times inner, and last times last, notice a cancellation of the middle terms, and I do in fact get the original problem, proving that my factorization was correct. Now this wasn't in the title of the video, but there is something worth mentioning here. There's something called a sum of squares. You see that minus sign in the problem? What if I change that to a plus? How would this be factorable then? Well, it turns out, except in very rare cases that you're highly unlikely to see, sums of squares are not factorable. Here would be the two logical choices. But if you want to pause the video here, it might be a good time to notice how this these multiply out. And notice when we multiply these out, these middle terms don't cancel, nor do these in this other case. And none of this is the, the quote work for this problem. This is me just showing you how the only two logical choices for factorizations here don't actually work because we get trinomial answers. In one case, we'd get a 10x. In the other case, we'd get a, ne a negative 10x. In either case, it wouldn't match the original problem. So essentially, if you get a sum of squares, mark it down as prime. And that completes lesson six of seven.